Well, my favorite hobby is traveling. And um, if I could choose between the best vacation ever, like going to the Bahamas or something, or Enlightenment Intensive, I would choose Enlightenment Intensive. The Enlightenment Intensive is set up in a way that um, uh, we are prepared in a way to, to, this, um, to the possibility that um, there's something to discover about our own true nature that uh, has slipped from our awareness so far. And um, the way you and Claire um, guide us through this and prepare us uh, through, through the whole intensive, through the uh, three days is um, always spot on. It, um, it's very supporting. And uh, there's no time stamp or uh, a condition um, when you get it, how deep or for how long it lasts. Um, but it's, it's, it's uh, worth giving up yourself. <sighs> Words. Um, you've just got to come and experience it if you want to discover who you are for yourself. No words can really describe it, but the joy of actually looking up into the sky and the universe and knowing you're totally connected with it and feel the joy and the love of it is just absolutely amazing. Um, a bit overwhelmed, really. Um, I think what's so incredible about this technique is that you see, I see we're all the same. I see that what we try and hide, we don't need to. And I see that the more authentic I can be, the more that comes back from others. I see that there is no need to not be angry, not be tearful, not to be sad, not to be joyous. All these states of different beings is completely perfect. And I just know in my heart, I'm, I'm not the same person that was through the door on Thursday evening. <laughs> <laughs> um, words I, no I can't say anything else I see people I see suffering I just uh, there's no one there in my uh, in my um, social network uh, who, who is deeply satisfied with, with him his or her life and um, I I got into the practice of being very obser observing, and um, patterns show up. There's like a, it's, it's, it can't be denied that there's a dynamic to the mind, and it uh, can be seen, it can be observed, and um, it just needs a space to 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 investigate into that um, safely, and being being looked after or taken care um, of by. Um, by people who know what the journey is like because they they can give the the last um, the last tip to the to to the to the stone so it keeps rolling or it's it's just yeah it's just beautiful place to be in enlightenment intensive and if you get it um, you know what I'm talking about and um, I would give everything I have if, if there was more that I can give <laughs> apart myself, but I would I would give anything um, I have to to have that experience. So the enlightenment intensive is an opportunity to inquire, to place one's attention and awareness on a question, and to earnestly ask, to earnestly seek an answer. And there's some. Initially, it may seem difficult. Initially, it may seem tricky to ask, who am I? The object being, this one sat here. Who is this one sat here? Who is this one thinking? Who is this one uh, feeling crap? Who is this one feeling 
no good. Who is this one feeling no worth, unworthy? Who is this one walking? Who is this one eating? Constantly asking who, who, who. And then being open. Being open to an answer. And the answer doesn't actually come from me. The answer comes from some, somewhere else, some great mystery that is not me and is not another person's mind. It comes from something that is not the mind. The beauty of this, of this process is it has, a, it has a, a structure, a container, where the purity of our contact, we can help each other through the purity of our contact. There's no one saying, oh, that's no good, or, oh, blimey, what, you don't know who you are, or anything like that. It's just the loving, spacious attention of the other, who for five minutes listens in these exercises called dyads, whilst I contemplate. And at the end of that, having been given the question uh, or the instruction, tell me who you are, I can contemplate that, I can go within, and I know that my partner's attention is on me. In a spacious, non-judgmental way, that I can do my thing, I can do my inquiry, and then at the end of that, whatever I say is okay. It may feel really difficult for me to say that, but the other does not judge it. The other does not invalidate it. The other just gets it, hears it, listens to it. And that is the magic of the intensive. And the other simply says, thank you. I've learnt that I am more than just my casual experience. I'm more than just my decisions. I'm something far, far greater than that. And I'm so much more than the problems and the doubts and the insecurities that I feel like I'm so presented with most of the time. And that's worth its weight in gold. To leave here knowing that there is something that I have that I cannot lose. It's been here all the time and I can get back to it whenever I can. And that is pure contentment. Yeah, once you, 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 you got the taste and bam, it just, that's gonna, imp, oh, that's gonna tattoo you from inside. It's just there and it stays there. And uh, it's, a, it's a point of reference for the rest of your life, if you want to. And on some of the dyads, I, on this experience, I went through this journey and unconditional love came up. And after that, when I was hearing people and they were speaking, I, it started to become irrelevant what they were saying. All I saw was just love. And it was like, once I'd gone beyond the chitter-chatter and the mind, it felt like no matter what anything happened or what anything anyone said, I just could see their essence. And that felt the essence was love. After this three-day retreat, uh, this enlightenment intensive with Shivam, Claire and James, um, I am in a very different place. And I'm reminded of the, the simplicity of what it is to be a human being. I've discovered that I am just simply me. I have no agenda, I have no drama, I have no attachments. I mean, all of that is waiting for me to get back, when, when, when I get back, when I get back home. Um, but I've tasted something, I've immersed myself in something, I've reminded myself of something. And what I've reminded myself of, it, of is the beauty, and I don't use that word lightly, I mean a vast, spacious beauty that can exist between me, this one here, and another. To have another's presence, another's attention, it's 
so valuable. It's such a great help. It's a gift to be there, present with another, and to have their attention while you pay attention to yourself and open up to yourself and dive into yourself and to have another there to witness and to receive whatever arises in that moment is just precious, precious beyond words. Communion. I stepped out of this realm of duality, this realm of right and wrong, up and down, man and woman, self and other, night and day, that the mind wrestles with all the time. I've stepped out of <laughs> I've stepped out of my mind, and that is a fantastic thing. I have stepped out of my mind, and I can simply be who I am with another. And there is nothing more precious and nothing more beautiful than that. Having having this amazing opportunity to to be together with people um, and investigate the most important question existence has to offer, mm -hmm. almost, is, um, it makes me shiver. <laughs> mm. It just makes me shiver. It's just so precious, priceless. Yeah. Coming to Enlightenment Intensive, if you are pondering in any way, what else is there? Is there something more? Who am I? And what else can I know? I don't think I've told the truth. I think I've described an experience, but I don't think I've told the truth that I've discovered. And what is the truth you've discovered? That we're eternal beings that inhabit many different bodies and As eternal beings, we don't experience the finite because it's infinite and that this habitation of the human form is here to teach us about a finite experience because it's something we just don't normally ex explore or experience. And it's not until you lose everything and the sadness that that brings that you learn the lesson that things come to an end. And then I think you can go on with living an eternal existence once you've learnt that. It's almost a bit like this river. You can join this river consciously and you can get in this river and you can swim upstream, which is what I've done also, as well as sitting on the shoreline. But eventually, whatever's left on the shoreline will be swept away in the flood anyway. So you either get in it now, or it makes you get in it in the end. Well, enlightenment is everything and nothing in the same time. It's, it's, it's nothing behind everything. It's, if you take everything away, then there's nothing. And this nothingness is... Uh, it's enough and it's beautiful enough and peaceful enough.